in this, our final lecture from Chapter 12's coverage on radical chemistry, I'm going to show you several examples from our book in which we get the opportunity to design syntheses of simple molecules using the various reactions we've learned in this and preceding chapters. Here's the lecture problem. I want you to design multi-step syntheses to convert the given starting materials into the products indicated. Now, as I'm going to show you the answers momentarily, you're welcome to pause this video at this point and attempt them first on your own. Here's our first example, converting this molecule, cyclohexene, into this product, 1,3-cyclohexadiene. How in the world can I do it? Well, as I've taught you in the past, we organic chemists traditionally start at the product and work backwards one step at a time using reactions that we know until we arrive back at the starting material that we're trying to get to. In this case, you might ask yourself, how in the world could I make this diene? There might be multiple different correct answers, but one of the simplest, I think, would occur if we had this molecule with a bromine at this position, and we treated it with a large, bulky base like potassium terbutoxide to do an E2 reaction. In the forward direction, if this base grabbed a hydrogen off of this position, pumped the electrons down here to swing like a trapdoor, and kicked off the bromide E2 style, it would indeed give me this diene. You might ask, how in the world could I make this product? Well, you could imagine that if I started with this molecule, cyclohexene, and treated it with NBS, the molecule that I've shown you earlier that always places the bromine one position away from the carbon-carbon double bond, along with peroxide, I could convert this molecule into this product. So how in the world could I get to this molecule, cyclohexene? Once again, you can imagine that if I had this molecule, cyclohexyl bromide, and did an E2 on it using a big bulky base like potassium terbutoxide, it would grab a hydrogen off of, it, off of an adjacent carbon, pump the electrons down to close like a door on a hinge, and kick off my bromide in one fell swoop to give me this product. And how in the world could I convert this molecule, cyclohexane, into this product, cyclohexyl bromide? I, of course, could do that using the reaction I taught you at the beginning of this chapter, treating it with Br2 and light under radical conditions. As I mentioned earlier, alkanes, like cyclohexane, are generally very, very unreactive under almost any conditions imaginable, except for these types of radical conditions. So this is a way we could get from our starting material to our product. Here's our second example, converting this starting material, methyl cyclohexane, into this dibrominated product. How in the world could I do that? Well, once again, I'm going to proceed backwards, starting from our end goal, this product. That is, through retrosynthetic analysis. How in the world could I make this product from some imaginary starting material? Well, you can imagine that if I had a double bond right here and treated it with bromine and a non-water solvent, I would indeed form this product, placing the two bromines anti to each other and giving me a racemic mixture at both stereocenters. This reaction seems like it could work. But how in the world could I make this product? Well, you can imagine working backwards that if I had a bromine at this position and treated this molecule with a big bulky base like potassium terbutoxide, it would do an E2 reaction, grabbing a hydrogen at this position, pumping the electrons down and kicking off the bromide in one fell swoop to give me the more stable, more substituted Zaitsev product shown here. Now we'll close our final open door, converting this starting material to this product. How could I do that? Well, now that we've learned the chemistry we know from this chapter, we know that we can treat this starting material with bromine and light, radical conditions, and it will, of course, place the bromine at the most substituted carbon, converting this starting material into this product. This is the way that we could convert the starting material into our final target shown here. All right, now here we find ourselves at our final example. How in the world could I convert this molecule, ethyl benzene into this final target that has a cyanide group. Once again, I'm going to analyze this starting at my end goal and working backwards one step at a time, retrosynthetically. You could imagine that if I could start with this molecule right here and treat it with sodium cyanide, that negatively charged carbon would come in here, form a bond with the CH2, kick off the bromide in one fell swoop, SN2 style, to give me this product. So the question is, how in the world could I make this? There may be various correct answers, but one that I thought of is this. If I started with a carbon-carbon double bond here, 
and treated it with bromine and peroxide under radical conditions that we've learned earlier in this chapter, I would place the bromine at the anti-Markovnikov position, that is, at the external carbon here, to get this product. This reaction should, in principle, work. Now let's work our ways backwards from this product. How in the world could I make that? Well, I might imagine that if I started with this starting material, where I've got a bromine at the internal carbon, and treated it with a bulky E2 base, potassium terp-butoxide, this base would grab a hydrogen off of this carbon, pump the electrons down, and kick off the bromide in one fell swoop to form this carbon-carbon double bond, E2 style. This reaction looks OK. So now, how in the world do I go from this starting material to this product? Well, you can imagine using the chemistry we've learned in this chapter. If I treated this with NBS and peroxide, it of course will place a bromine one carbon away from the benzene ring at the benzyl position. Remember, benzyl, 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 benz, one away from his friends, Ooh, giving me this product. This is a completely acceptable way of synthesizing this target molecule from this starting material. All right, that is the end of our Chapter 12 coverage of radical chemistry. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. I know I've had a blast. I appreciate you joining us. Until next time, have an enjoyable rest of your day.